Hello world, Hidu here, and today we will talk about 7 things I wish I knew earlier about Python classes. If you are new here, welcome to my channel. I'm a software engineer from Singapore, and I make tutorials and practice questions relating to Python and programming. Now back to the video. Number 1, the init magic method. So here I'm just going to create a doc class. So given this, if I create a doc object, so if I print this, I'm going to get this gibberish over here. However, without any attributes, our dot object here will not be very useful. So here, let's define underscore underscore init double underscore and we take it in a self and after this self, we decide what attributes we want our dot to have. So here, to make things easier, let's just assume that we have a name and an h. And in our init function, self dot name is equals to name and self dot h is equals to h. And here, self refers to the doc object itself and so if we run this again we'll get an error and because of the init method we now need to pass in a name and an age so let's say rocky and five so let's run this and here we have created our doc object with the name rocky and the age five so here if we print doc dot name and doc dot age we will get rocky and five Number two, the string magic method. So here, using our previous example, we have created a dog with name is equals to Rocky, H is equals to five, and breed is equals to German Shepherd. However, if we print dog currently, we are going to get main dot dog object at whatever gibberish over here. This happens because when we convert dog into a string, this is the default behavior. However, we can actually control this behavior using the string magic method. So here I'm going to define double underscore str double underscore and self. And here note that we must return a string value in this method. So here I'm just going to return hello first. And if I run this once again, notice that I'm going to have hello here. So here I'm going to remove the star and this will give us the same result. So when we print doc, we will print hello. And this is because we tell it to print hello. So next, let's make this string magic method more useful. So here, I'm going to create a formatted string. Dot name is equals to self dot name. H is equals to self dot H. And breed is equals to self dot breed. And here, if I run this again, I'm going to get dot name is Rocky. H is 5 and breed is German Shepherd. And similarly, if I create another dot, so let's say Remy, one grow, and let's put H is 4. So let's print Remy instead of dog. And if I run this, I'm going to get dog name is Remy, H is 4, and breed is equals to mongrel. And here, this is being printed in this manner because of how we define our stir method. However we define our stir method will be however our dog is represented. So if I change this to doggy, this will also be doggy. Number 3, the dig attribute. So here, using our previous example, we have a simple dog class over here. However, let's say that I don't really know that dog has name, age, and breed. So how do I actually find this out? I can do it using double underscore dict and double underscore. So here, this attribute is actually a dictionary that contains all its attributes. So if I print this, I'm going to get name is Rocky, age is 5, and breed is German Shepherd. So here, let's say I remove breed. So let's say I have name age gender. So here, self gender is equals to gender. So Rocky, let's say is a male. And if I run this again, I'm gonna get name Rocky, age five, and gender male. So this dig attribute can actually be quite useful if we are dealing with an object with many many attributes. Number four, super dot init. So here, I'm going to create two classes, a rectangle and a square. So in this case, a square is actually a child class of rectangle because a square is a more specific rectangle. So here, if we take a look at the definitions of a square and a rectangle, a square is simply a rectangle where its length is equal to its width. So in this case, a square is actually a more specific rectangle, which means that we can make square inherit from rectangle. So here, when we do inheritance, whatever we define in a rectangle will be passed on to square. So here, let's define init 
So here a rectangle will take in a length and a width. So similarly, self length is equals to length and self width is equals to width. And next, let's define area. So here, area will take in nothing and we'll simply return the area of the rectangle, which is simply length times self width. So here, let's say we define a rectangle and let's say we have 5 and 4. So let's print r dot area. And here we are expecting to get 20. And here we have it, we get 20. So next, let's talk about square. So when square inherits from rectangle, everything in rectangle will be passed on to square. So it is as if that square has this init method and this area method. However, if we take a look at the init method, Notice that we do not actually need the width because we know for sure that length is actually equals to width in a square. And so this is why super init might be useful here. So here, let's define init and self and we make it take in length only. So here, there is no need for square to take in width because length is equals to width. So next, we can call super dot init. And here, super.init will call the init method of its parent class, which is rectangle. So next, whatever we do here must adhere to whatever is defined in this init method. So it takes in a length and a width. So we pass in a length and a width. So length and length. And we can do this because length is equal to width in a square. So here, I'm going to comment this out and I'm going to print a square. So s is equal to square. So let's say 6, and if we print s.length and s.width, we should also get 6. So here what's happening is that we pass in 6 to squares init method. And so length is equal to 6. And here we pass length to length and width. So once again, this refers to the init method of its parent class. So here, length is 6 and width is also 6. So here, self-length is 6 and self-width is also 6. So next, s.area. And if we print this, we should get 36. And here we have it. Number 5, inheritance versus composition. So next, let's put down the definitions first. Inheritance is a, is a relationship. Well, composition is a, has a, relationship. So here are some examples. A square is a rectangle. A dog is a animal. A cat is a animal. A German Shepherd is a dog. So here what happens is that square inherits from rectangle. So dog inherits from animal. Cat also inherits from animal and German shepherd inherits from dog. And next, we move on to a composition. A car has tires. A person has a mother. A person has a father. A pet has a owner and so on. So in this case, if the relationship between two entities is composition, there will be no inheritance. So let's use a square and a rectangle as example. So here, class rectangle, and we have class square. So square will inherit from rectangle. However, let's say a car has tires. So here we have class tire, and we have class car. So in the init method of a car, so let's say self name and whatever, and let's say we have tires. So self name is equals to name, and self tires is equals to tires. And similarly, let's say class pet and class owner. And over here, a pet has owner. So here, let's define the init method. So self name and owner. So self name is equals to name and self owner is equals to owner. So here, this is a composition relationship. This is also a composition relationship but this is an inheritance relationship. So here, we have to be very clear about the relationship between our entities, whether they are inheritance or composition. Number six, class method and static method. So here, I'm gonna create a dot class. So here, let's say we define an intro. 
So here it takes in self and it prints my name is self name. So here let's create a rocky is equals to dot rocky and six. So here rocky dot intro and if we run this we are gonna get my name is rocky. So in this case intro is actually an instance method which means that it has access to our instance attributes. So we have name, we have age. So next, let's talk about class methods. So here I'm going to define get all dot names. So instead of self, we put CLS and above our class method, we have add class method. So here, get all dot names is a class method and it belongs to the dot class itself. So here I'm going to create a class attribute. So let's say all dot names is equals to nothing. All dot names dot append name. So return CLS dot all dot names. So here let's create a bunch of other docs. So here notice that I'm using the dot class. So dot dot get all dot names open and close bracket. And if I run this, I'm gonna get Rocky, Remy, and Fifi. So next, let's talk about our static method. So here define get equivalent h. So we have dog h and we return dog h times 7. So here, this is a static method and a static method has no access to either class or instance attributes. So in this case, a static method is simply a function that is inside the dog namespace. So let's say print dog dot get equivalent h Let's say my dog is 5 years old, and if I run this, I'm going to get 35. Number 7, the property decorator. So here, let's create a dog. However, if you have taken an object-oriented programming class in Python, your professor might ask you to do something like this. So self double underscore name and self double underscore h is equal to name and h. So next, we have define name self and we return self dot double underscore name and similarly we have a define h self and return self dot double underscore h and above these two functions we add a add property and similarly here we add add property so here let's say rocky is equals to dot so rocky 5 so if we print rocky dot name and rocky dot h we are going to get rocky and 5. So here, if we call rocky.name, we are actually calling this function. And if we call rocky.h, we are actually calling this function. However, notice that it does not have the open and close brackets because of this property decorator over here. So here, the purpose of this is for access control. So let's say that we only want our users to have access to name but not h. So we remove this. So if we run this once again, dot object has no attribute h. So next, let's add back our h. And next, let's say we want to allow our users to only change the name but not the h of our dot. So here we can do this add name dot setter. So define name and self new name and in our function self dot double underscore name, which is from here, is equals to new name. So here, let's say rocky.name is equals to Fifi. So if we run this, we have Fifi and 5. However, let's say we want to change our age. So let's say age is 7. And if we run this, property age of dog object has no setter. And we cannot do this because we haven't added a setter for our age. So with property over here, we can control which attributes our users can set or get. So once again, thanks for watching and hopefully this was clear and easy to understand. See you in the next one.